Attention! McCarthy Math Academy proudly presents the Math FSA Boot Camp Series. Hello everyone, I'm Miss McCarthy and I am so excited that you are here. are more than a test score. We don't want you stressing out about this test. We just want you to activate your greatness within. And you might be saying, But Miss McCarthy, listen, I know that math is your jam, but math and I, yeah, we're not really the best of friends. You may have struggled in the past, and you know what? Good. Struggle is necessary because struggle makes us stronger. If we go over something in these videos that you're like, hmm, that skill didn't quite click yet, I'm gonna send you to more videos to help you practice. Your teachers and I, we can expose you to all kinds of tools and strategies, but you have to choose to use them. You have to choose to own them. Imagine opening up that test and feeling so excited to throw down your best. This can be your reality. So now is the time that you need to activate the person you were born to be and let's do this. Are you ready to throw 100% focus, hustle, and heart into this right now? That's what I'm talking about, yes! Okay, let's go ahead and jump on into today's episode of the Math FSA Bootcamp Series. And <laughs> I almost forgot to say, uh, let me teach ya. What's going on third grade? Welcome to the Math FSA Boot Camp Series. I'm hoping that you have the worksheet that you need for today because we're gonna go ahead and rock and roll. If you're like, Miss McCarthy, I don't have the worksheet. And somewhere around this video, there should be a link that will take you to a place where you can download the worksheet that you need for this episode along with the other episodes in the third grade series. So at this time, go ahead and pause the video, complete number one and number two on your own, and then come on back to check your work. All right, so before we even get started, let's go ahead and identify the question type. I'm looking and I see the word select all or the words select all the expressions. And I'm seeing five answer choices, not four, but five. So what kind of question type is this? Yeah, it's a multi-select, so jot that down if you did not already. Awesome, now that we know what type of question it is, let's go ahead and get started. We'll start by marking up our text. So this says select all the expressions. These are the expressions down here and they do not have an equal sign. Select all the expressions that have a value or an amount of 400. Okay, so basically we need to take a look at each of these expressions, solve them out to see if they have an amount of 400. We got this. So A says 10 times four. Let's go ahead and solve that out. So 10 times four. Well, this is a multiple of 10 right here. It's actually 10. And when we have multiples of 10, we can do the first digit or the digit in the tens place times the other single digit in the ones place, like one times four would give us four. And because we're multiplying by a multiple of 10, we add one zero there. So 10 times four equals 40. Is that the same as 400? It's not, so what can we do with this answer choice? Eliminate. Let's try the next one, five times 80. So five times 80. Again, this is a multiple of 10. We can tell because it's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. So what we can do is first multiply the five times the eight. I'm going to use my multiplication mashup song to help me with this. So I'm gonna sing the five song and get eight fingers up. So, ah, oh, nah, here come the fives. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25. You'll know them all shortly. 30, 35, and 40. Eight fingers, and what did I say? 40. Five times eight equals 40. And then we also have to include the zero because it's a multiple of 10, which would be 400. And say, isn't that what we need? It sure is. Let's go ahead and mark choice B. Okay, the next one, five times 90. 
Well, we can tell that this is going to be higher than 400 because five times 80 equals 400. And now we're doing five times 90, which would be higher. So we can already eliminate this one, but let's go ahead and solve it out just because we can. All right, so let's do five times nine. So again, with the five song. Ah, oh, nah, here come the fives. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25. You'll know them all shortly. 30, 35, and 40. And then there's 45. So five times nine is 40. Five, and we can't forget to include our zero on the end. That's right. So 450, which is not true. We can eliminate that one. All right, let's take a look at 50 times eight. 50 times eight. All right, so we're gonna do five times eight. Didn't we just do that? Yeah, we did right here. Five times eight was 40. And then because the 50 has one zero, let's throw a zero on the back and we get 400. So there's another answer choice, D. All right, and then 50 times nine, well, we know that five times nine equals 45 and add a zero, which is 450, right? So let's go ahead and jot that down, 450. And what can we do with choice E? Eliminate, that's right. So our choices for this one are B and D. All right, let's take a look at number two. Before we even get started reading the text for number two, let's just take a quick look through it. And I'm seeing complete the statements, fill in the bubble. We've got A, B, A, B, A, B. This is an editing task kind of question. Jot that down if you did not already. Now let's go ahead and mark up our text. So it says a pet store has six chameleons for sale six chameleons. Each chameleon costs, so each one, let me get both of those, each chameleon costs $30. So if you want one chameleon, it's $30. If you want two chameleons, it's 30 plus 30, which is $60, right? And Greg purchases all of the chameleons, all six. I'm gonna just jot down six of them. Complete the statements to show how much Greg spent on the chameleons. So to show, we're looking for how much did he spend on the chameleons. For each box, fill in the bubble before the choice that is correct. You know what, before we even get started, I wanna make sure that I can model out what's going on in this problem, okay? So a pet store has six chameleons. I'm not very good at drawing chameleons, so what I'm gonna do is just make each box a chameleon. All right, there's six of them, so one, two, three, four, five, six. I could have done circles. I just chose to represent boxes. If you are a quick drawer and you know how to draw chameleons real quick, do that. But don't waste too much time because on the FSA, for most of us, it's a time test and it's important that our drawings are quick. It's important to draw. It's just important to also make sure that they're quick. So each chameleon costs $30. So here's $30 for a chameleon, 30 and 30. 30, okay, and we know that Greg purchases all six of them. So what I see here is groups of equal things. I see chameleons that cost $30 each, which means that my operation here is what? Are we adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing with groups of equal things? We are multiplying. So that would be how many groups? Yes, yeah, six groups, six chameleons that each cost $30. Okay, so to solve that out, that would be six times three. Let me use my six song to help from the multiplication mashup. That would be, hey sixes, I just met ya. You're kinda crazy. Six, 12, and 18. That would be 18. So six times three is 18. And we add a zero on the back because 30 is a multiple of 10. How much did Greg spend on the chameleons? He spent how much? $180. He must really love him some chameleons. Now that we have an understanding of what's happening with Greg and the chameleons and how much money he's spending, it makes it a little bit easier for us to go ahead and tackle this editing task item. So it says, since 30, which is the cost, right? Cost of each chameleon. Since 30 is the sum of 10 and another number, or is a multiple of 10? Well, we know that 30 is a multiple of 10, and we just kept saying here 30 because it's a multiple of 10, 10, 20, 
30 multiple of 10, we know it's gonna be choice B. Since 30 is a multiple of 10, Greg can first find the product of six and three. Product means that we're doing what? It means that we're multiplying, yeah. Find the product of six and three, so six times three, which is 18. That's what we did, right? That looks good. Or did Greg first find the quotient of six and three? Which operation are we doing if we're finding the quotient again? Division, yeah. And were we dividing? We were not, we were not finding the quotient six divided by three, which is two. So we can eliminate that. Let's mark up choice A. All right, then Greg must find the product, which again means that we're multiplying, the product of 18 and 10, which is 180. Hey, that's the answer we got. And we multiplied 18 times that 10 there for the 30, because 30 is a multiple of 10 to get 180, or did we find the product of two and 10? No, we did not get 20, so we can eliminate that and let's mark A. That wraps it up for number one and number two, so go ahead and pause the video and make any corrections that you need to make to your paper, and then stay tuned because I'm about to tell you where to get access to more videos on this skill. So today's standard right here was all about multiplying by multiples of 10. If you know that you need some more practice with this, first I want you to check out the link below for McCarthy Math 155. Now you do have to be a member to access the videos, but anybody can grab a free seven day trial to check out the program. So with that free trial, go ahead and check out unit five, days 64 through 67, and we break down the same skill that we were working on here. So I hope to see you there. Also, I'm gonna include a link to my How to Pass the Math FSA series, which I created a few years ago back when the FSA was a computer-based test. It's not a computer-based test anymore, which is why I'm creating the Math FSA Boot Camp to reflect the paper-based test. Still, the How to Pass the Math FSA series, especially for this standard, provides great practice. Okay, It might look a little different than what you're going to see, but still it gives you excellent practice, so I encourage you to check that out. You heard me rocking out to the multiplication mashup, which is helping thousands, maybe even millions of kids from all over to learn their multiplication back. So I highly encourage you to not only check out that song, but to listen to it over and over and over again until you have the songs memorized. I hope that you follow me on my social media platforms. That way you can stay in the loop with everything McCarthy Math Academy. I'm on Instagram at McCarthy Math Academy. I'm on Facebook at McCarthy Math Academy. And of course, I'm here on YouTube at McCarthy Math Academy. If you enjoyed this video, if you found it helpful, if you could do me a favor and smash that like button that would be awesome, not just for me, but because I'm on a mission to help as many students, third, fourth, and fifth graders and their teachers as I possibly can. So when you click that like button, it lets everybody know that this is a video that they need to watch and therefore I can help so many people. So thank you for that like. While you're at it, go ahead and subscribe. That way you're the first to know when I drop a new video. And finally, before we go, I just want you to know that you were created for a purpose. That's right, you are the ones that we have been waiting for. So find your light and shine it bright. Watch out world because we have a whole new generation of world changers ready to step it up and make this world a better place. When you have the choice, choose kindness and you always have that choice. And I will see you all on the next episode.